right, so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I control flea beetles and aphids and other slight sucking insects. Now, there are some insects that do get in here and they do cause some damage to my plants. They might make holes in the leaves like that. They don't chew very often or very long, but they do make some holes in the plants. And I'm not quite sure what insect it is. I can't identify the insect that's causing that damage. I know what flea beetle damage looks like and I know what aphid damage looks like and stuff like that. But in general, with certain insects in the greenhouse and even in the garden if possible, if I start to notice it, I can kind of apply this technique for the most part. may have to spend an extra day out there really eradicating the larger infestation of that particular insect. But once I get all of that under control, maintaining that population of that insect is very important and the way I do that is basically I go around and I just look at my plant very carefully and I train my eye to be able to identify certain insects on my plants ones that are very prevalent for example over here I'll give you an example very hard to do this when the leaves of another plant want to get right in your way. Okay, so right here. You can see there's like a little thing on there, right? I'm not quite sure if that's an aphid or I don't know what this thing is, but they, they get all over my plants and they spread like crazy. If you let these things go, they will absolutely cover everything. They'll be everywhere, and then they turn into these little flies. They almost look like fungus gnats, but I don't know if they're fungus gnats. But they get all over my plants, and they spread like crazy. So you really, you really have to really, you know, trying to give you good focus here as I talk. You really got to stay on top of it. So basically, when I see those, I just simply clear them off as soon as I see them. I just squish them off. They're just like aphids. They're very light. I think I've seen another one back here somewhere. There's one over here. So what, whatever these red things are, they're sucking insects like an aphid. They're not chewing insects. They're sucking insects and they will cause damage. I just squeeze them off and get rid of them. Another one up here. Okay, so when I look, I train my eye to find them, and I see them, and I squish them off. They pop one, two, three. They squish right off. And you really got to look for them on the tops of the plants because, in my case, that's where they start. Especially when it comes to aphids and flea beetles and those kind of things. They like the tops of the plants because it's the freshest. It's like a vegetable to them. So, basically what I do is I just simply... You know, I'll spend an hour or two walking around my greenhouse and really looking around really good. And I really clean off every one of those insects that I see. Like as I'm doing filming, I'm kind of doing it now, but I'm not really looking that good and I don't have my glasses on. When I got my glasses on, I can see things really, really good. And I can really identify them. But they mostly get into the tops of the plants. Very difficult to get them out. Sometimes you can spray them out of there with a... A little neem oil or something like that but I try to do it all by hand rather than try and you know apply a chemical or something like that because a lot of times plants don't respond too good to chemicals even neem oil sometimes it they they don't like it like here here's a bunch of them here I just squish them off now as long as if I do this on a daily basis and I'm constantly going around and like here's one on the flower and I'm cleaning them off on a regular basis, their populations can never really get a, a really good hold on really overpopulating. But as soon as I stop doing that, as soon as I, I don't no longer uh, clean, them up, clean them off my plants, that's when they start really breaking, you know, that's when it really starts to take off. They really start to really infestate. And that can happen within a couple days. So as long as if I keep walking around in my plants, 
and generally this is only in the greenhouse outside you don't see these things they, they don't like to be outside this particular insect they like it in here but even in your garden it's the same principle so I look around and and unfortunately here's an aphid in this particular case unfortunately I can't really get to the back so if, if a spot fire begins back there I'm in trouble because I can't really get back there unless I get a ladder and go up there and there's really no way to set a ladder up on over here I, I try to do everything I can here because they do like to come forwards here's one here you see that's what I do and I do that every day I come out I examine my plants I look for insects I look for damage I look for diseases or anything like that generally with peppers though you don't really get diseases so with peppers I don't usually worry about diseases but as far as the insects go I pretty much walk all the way around my plants and I examine them really good I'll squish maybe like 50 or 60 of those things I look you know spend an hour or two squish them all off and then that's it you don't really see them and you don't really see too much damage now, this particular insect that I'm showing you that I squish off, what, what ends up happening is they'll suck, they'll suck a leaf to the point where they start to get curly. So that's one way to identify when you're getting this particular damage to this insect. You'll start seeing something like this over here. This is like aphid damage or, or thrift damage. You, I might have thrifts on here, you know, or aphids or something, or something like that that's causing that kind of damage to a leaf. So when you see that, that usually means you got something there. You should investigate it or remove the leaf with what if they're thrifts or scales. Sometimes it's just easier to just clip that one leaf off and just dispose of it and get it out of your garden rather than trying to treat that one leaf because they might not be all over the plant. They might just be concentrated on that leaf. So sometimes it's just better to, to remove that leaf. Here's one here right at the top. I just squish them off. Another one. Where are you? Right there. See it? I just squish him off and he's gone. He was a big one, that one. That was probably full of eggs. And when you squish him off and you and you smoosh them in your fingers, make sure you squish them away from your, your plants. Because if they're filled with eggs, you're going to squish them and they fall down into the pot. And uh, now you got an infestation because, you know, the eggs hatched. So, you know, just keep that keep that in mind. I do the same thing with flea beetles in my greenhouse. Now, these aren't flea beetle damage here. These are some other kind of insect that gets in, in here and chews. And I don't know what they are. And it very well could be, uh, what do you call those things? Woodlouse. It very well, this, this leaf damage could be from woodlouse. So it's very possible because I do see them getting on my leaves. This is just some leaf curl. I'm not sure why this, these leaves on this particular plant are curling up like that. I don't know. The other plant is fine. But that's what I do when I go to control these smaller type insects. And if you do that all the time, in general, you can really stave off an infestation. It really does work. It's the, probably the best way to do it. You could put all the sprays you want on there. And you can, you know, you could do all the stuff you want. But in general, the best thing you can do is to just go around and start doing it by hand and just remove the insects by hand. Identify the insects and then remove them, you know. So you want to know what kind of insect problems you're having. If it's white flies, uh, you better deal with them, you know. Another problem could be in your garden as far as insects or in, in your greenhouse and potted plants is uh, fungus gnats. And fungus gnats have several different types of life cycles. They're, they're larvae, then they live in your soil, and then they come on your plants like a type of an aphid, and then they grow, and there's all, they can be a serious problem. So treating fungus gnats, it may be a, a very of high importance to you. But aphids are usually the worst when you get them because those things will literally multiply faster than anything I've ever seen. They're, they're the worst to get because they're the easiest to kill, but they're the worst to get because aphids multiply so fast, it's almost impossible to even keep up with it. You might see one aphid on a plant one day, and you go out there the next day, and you'll see like a thousand of them, that, and, and they're full size already. It's like, how is that even possible? I don't know, but that's how it works 
with aphids. So what I do generally, like I say, with aphids, these are this is slug damage, what you see here. This is all slugs getting into my garden. You know it's slug damage because you could see that stuff, that film they leave. It, so I, I got rid of most of the slugs, but there are occasionally a few that live down in the bedding down here, and I got to wait for them to come up to the surface and catch them. But the smaller... Um, but the smaller insects like uh, aphids and uh, flea beetles, that's how you deal with them. You make sure you crush them off all the time. And certain plants are very attracted to these types of insects. Uh, this is, for example, is very attracted to these red aphid things or whatever they are. I don't even know what these things are. And aphids and all. But they're also, for eggplants, flea beetles are highly attracted to them. They will come out of, the, come out of nowhere to get to your to your plant so make sure you you check your make sure you check your eggplant plants and even if you wanted to grow a couple eggplants as sacrificial plants somewhere to suck all those insects into one area and get them away from the rest of your garden that's not a bad idea either you may not eat eggplants but it might be actually a good idea for you to uh, just grow them like a sacrificial plant just to get the, the the aphids and the other insects away from your 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 main crops that you're growing. So it's a good idea to do that as well. But I don't see too many in here because, again, I do this every day. And it doesn't take long, and I, it's relaxing. And like here, there's a few here. You know, I see one there. I go through them. There's one on that leaf. And as long as if you keep on it like that all the time and you're constantly predating on these things and eventually their numbers will will drop but they never disappear completely because they're coming from another source obviously aphids are like that they can come in from other sources and same thing with flea beetles they they have a way of getting around and getting even into your greenhouse or your house or so you're going to always have to do this but as long as if you do this like here's a little outbreak you can see of these things. See that little outbreak? Now, if I walked away from that for more than a day, because I'm, again, I go through this every day. If I stayed away from that for more than a day, this whole top will be covered with them. And those things will spread all the way across the other plants. Once you see that whole top covered with them, it, they're already everywhere in your greenhouse. You just don't see them yet. They're underneath the leaves and stuff. So you basically got to go in there and clean it up. Just like that. It's just like that. No effort at all. No chemicals, no effort. Just wipe them off. And you know you know that they're sucking insects because they leave a sap on your fingers when you squish them. Because they're all filled with the sugars from the plant and everything. So, yeah, you see how I just cleared that. Now, if I again, if I were just to leave that, that can become a very serious problem. Very easily, within a day or two. This entire greenhouse will be completely infested with those things within only a couple of days. So, you have to stay on top of it. Now, as long as if you do this, you won't have that problem. All right? So, I figured I would share that with you. And it's, it's, just, an, it's just a way of having to deal with these insects like aphids, especially aphids. This is really mostly about aphids and kind of about flea beetles too, but as, as long as if you, you know, you're doing that to both those two insects, generally they, they don't really get a grasp on overpopulating and you can really keep it in check. All right. So uh, don't, if you have any experience with your own uh, aphids or flea beetles or anything and how you deal with it, comment below, share your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.